Hello everyone, here we are with Dr. Tom Vinimum. This is an informal interview about uh, his course on financial modeling and how he transformed his course. He just won the Innovation Teaching Award here at NU. I am super proud because I was part of this process as well. And I would like to just introduce him to you guys. Hello, Tom, how are you doing today? Hello, Ricardo. <laughs> Thank you for collaborating on this project. Yeah, I'm proud as well that we have won this. Yeah, very um, happy. All right. Mm. All right, so can you tell us a little bit about the process? All right, so the idea is that when you teach a class, you start with writing a syllabus or somebody writes a syllabus mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. And um, it's all loose ends. Um, it's, if you look at the or textbook, for instance, it's going to have different chapters mm -hmm. and they're somehow connected. But from the perspective of students, sometimes it's difficult to have an idea about what the entire storyline is. Mm -hmm. So what we thought is we're actually going to build or design a storyline next to the course content mm -hmm. and that's what we did okay so th there's a little bit of a gamified approach to it can you tell a little bit about it or yeah so mm -hmm. we wanted to make it fancy and attractive to the students mm -hmm. so we come up with different media assets mm -hmm. there is a uh, one character that is actually the lecturer but then more or less an avatar mm -hmm. of that character mm -hmm. And then there is a uh, character from the Forge, which is some distant organization mm -hmm. that reminds us a little bit of an open source uh, community. Mm -hmm. And then we have what I call the cinematography, mm -hmm. which is probably what you're most proud of. Oh, that definitely. is where we, where we went <laughs> filming yeah. and have like short clips that um, gamify the mm -hmm. entire experience for the students. Mm -hmm. how, how do you think the experience went when creating the, the media assets? Because you drew from local talent as well and we we had to shoot in, in different places. Oh, it was it was a lot of improvising, of course. It's yeah. the first time um, we're, we're setting this type of structure um, next to a course. Yeah. So um, I started off with a scenario mm -hmm. and the scenario is um, a story about a trading house and the students enter uh, in that story um, from the perspective of students, mm. uh, because they are students. Mm -hmm. And the world is a disarray, just like the world wasn't disarrayed at that time. Mm -hmm. And they learn step by step how the trade works. Mm -hmm. um, they get into trouble in the story, and then they join the industry, and in the end they have a big party. Mm. Um, so we have... Um, and I think now I forgot what you were asking. <laughs> yeah, you went back a little bit, but <laughs> that's fine. No, we were talking about how well, well, how was the experience, oh, with, how was the experience? With, with the people that we worked with that were not from NU, how, how it was to, okay. to kind of try to do something that hasn't been done here at NU. And I think that's why it won the, the award because it was innovative, it was fresh, had a little bit of flair in my opinion, of course. But I'm also giving a pat on my back <laughs> by saying that, you know, because this was something that you allowed me to put a lot of uh, art-based right. work into it. And, and like you said, once you gave me carte blanche to pretty much just go berserk on it. And, and that's really fun and interesting. And I, I guess I want to know what what's your thoughts on it. And also, how did students react to it? Mm -hmm. And how do you think the community also react to it? Okay, that's a lot of questions. Yes, it uh, is, sir. <laughs> let me answer them one by one, all if right. I remember them. Right. Um, so, first of all, we, after writing the scenario, we, um, we, I, I was sitting, when I say we, yeah. that's you, you Ricardo. And I, <laughs> it's basically us. We yeah. were sitting <laughs> at a restaurant just thinking about uh, how we could actually fill in the scenario. Yeah. And we decided on, on these three characters. Um, of course, it would be nice to have, uh, you know, a full feature film or uh, or a full, you know, full feature anime that's split up along the course. That's of course not possible. So, yeah. we decided um, to work with volunteers because we don't really have a budget. Yeah. And um, so, part of the things are colleagues who volunteered, and oh, well, we asked them, and they happily always said, um, "Okay, this is a good idea. I like the idea." Mm -hmm. And um, so. We have an avatar, which is me, and an avatar of one of our colleagues. No. And then we have um, some newscasters, which are also colleagues. And then we actually wanted to have students participate. Mm -hmm. But because of the, the current restrictions, um, we just worked with 
people who are at the fringe of the university, let's say. Um, so we knew them and we had them participate in the cinematography. Mm -hmm. And that worked really well. I mean, everybody was really enthusiastic about this mm -hmm. project. That was made it a lot easier if mm, people wouldn't have believed in it, I think, then it would be more difficult to get them to engage as much. Mm -hmm. um, so thanks, of course, to the uh, ILH, mm -hmm. the Innovative, Innovative Learning um, Hub. Yes, indeed. <laughs> hub that, for for providing this mm -hmm. opportunity and um i understand you when you said carte blanche i mean i also got carte blanche from i think the the, the university community <laughs> and from the yeah. Innov innovative learning hub yeah. um and i think that's also what made this a big success because mm -hmm. in a part it looks like it's art integration yeah yeah definitely. um together to hardcore uh, academic contents mm -hmm. and um that's something, I mean, at least for me, was relatively new, but I believe that's really the way forward, maybe also for uh, other classes. Yeah. How, how, how do you think the, the kids reacted to it? Yeah, so that was interesting because I, we, I didn't play the cinema or like these uh, avatars in the classroom mm -hmm. because we are doing this remote session. Sure. So yeah. um, it, it was a little bit tricky to, to see what their reaction is. Mm -hmm. um, some some actually gave a positive reaction. Some didn't really talk about it. I didn't actually press on, mm. you know, you like this or not, because it for me it's kind of a story that's in the background mm. that helps them to to put things together. So I don't really need to press and ask. So what do you think about the assets itself? Right. But let, let me exp um, let me explain. For instance, one of the mm. things which is helpful. That is that um, one of the, the characters, which we call the doctor, mm -hmm. um, he he explicitly talks about intended learning outcomes. Mm -hmm. You know what the intended learning outcomes are? Yes, I do. But maybe the viewers don't. You can talk a little bit about so that the, and constructive alignment, for example, if you want. All right. So the idea is that each of the ses sessions has a intended learning outcome, mm -hmm. which we call a silo. Mm -hmm. So S stands for session. Yes. And uh, that helps the students to know what they actually have to attain. Mm -hmm. And it also helps if you make this explicit and you put this in on, on camera, mm -hmm. then it also helps the lecturer or the convener of this class mm -hmm. to stick to that pace. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and then these intended learning outcomes, they come with an assessment ta task. Mm -hmm. So these assessment tasks are also kind of gamified mm -hmm. or they are also put in in, in the cinema. Mm. Um, and that helps um, not just to motivate or engage the students, but it also brings them to that level that they understand what they need to attain mm. uh, for their grades, because grades are always important for, for the students. Definitely, yeah, that's the end game for them, yeah. well, obviously. Right. So what do you think it's, uh, the future for this, this module will be? I mean, we talked a little bit together during the <laughs> preparations right. yeah, at the restaurant because we're, we're having a lot of pizza during this the, the preparation for for this uh for the <laughs> materialization margarita and, margarita. Uh, margarita, margarita that's that's all i eat pizza okay. pizza is life <laughs> i'm not gonna i'm not gonna cut this part uh it's gonna stay like that all right anyway so what you, you're talking about you know cohorts of students uh building okay. upon the knowledge we, we discussed this previously and i think this is important for you to mention because um right. i think it's a key issue of of a key issue in a, in a good way, yeah, a positive key issue of uh, the strategy that you put for this course. All right, uh, you're mentioning cohort after cohort. Mm -hmm. um, we discussed this before, but um, for me, this is a project that's collaborative mm -hmm. and also open-ended. Mm -hmm. um, I find that important mm -hmm. that the students can participate over time right. and that they, when they do something, when they make a contribution, mm -hmm. that we pick that contribution up Mm -hmm. and then give that to the next cohort. So the next cohort can develop on what yeah. the previous students have been doing. Right. So that's kind of satisfying yeah. um, for the previous cohort. Right. And it's also motivating for the next cohort. Mm -hmm. So um, we have, um, for the cinematographic part, we have now about five or six, the sessions have these clips. Mm -hmm. um, the idea would be to have the current students yeah. or the uh, next generation students involved 
and building out the next cinematography. So, right. um, of course, we don't want to overload them. Sure. The, core, the core is, of course, the academic content. But mm -hmm. I guess there will be some of the students who are interested in that. Or they could be students who are living on campus mm -hmm. and they do want to do film or they want mm -hmm. to work with creative mm -hmm. media. Sure. To engage them in this, um, that would be would be really great. Yeah. And then, um, so it's also structured a bit because course content is changing over time. Mm -hmm. And um, like it, it might be that one year, um, the, the course content has you know, five modules and then something becomes a little bit more advanced. Mm -hmm. um, so the course content is gonna change over time. Mm -hmm. So what we try to do is keep this these cinemas or these avatars um, relatively flexible. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the cinema should stand. Sure. Um, but the avatars can kind of like st start talking a little bit differently mm -hmm. over time. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second thing I think that's important is that we, we see this as a, as a, or I see this as a template for maybe other classes. Mm -hmm. This is now implemented for um, master of finance programs. And maybe this, this is not probably the best right. match, but it did work. Yeah, and sure. it, I'm hopeful that this format could be a great motivator for, let's say, general education classes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or when we have uh, cross-disciplinary -dis courses uh, mm -hmm. that are introduced in the curriculum, yeah. or we can basically have a thinking about like generation students or something. Right, right. And that would be great if we can uh, use that format also for different classes to, uh, you know, get the community engaged and to have the people and students really motivated. Yeah, definitely, I agree. So there's there's lots of uh, teaching strategies that you use. Yeah, like gamification, active learning. Uh, can you, you know, talk a little bit about them? And and did you think about this before you started weaving the the storyline, or it was something that just all right? I mean, up? I like I like game gamify and and uh, the other concept you mentioned. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I I thought of this uh, from the perspective of assurance, assurance of learning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, um, when, I, when I was in Hong Kong previously, um, we were kind of heavily involved in accreditation and so on. So right. this assurance of learning is a, is a big part of accreditation for, right, right. for programs. Um, so that's why we have this ILOs, these mm -hmm. this intended mm -hmm. learning outcomes there. Yeah. And then, uh, so the, the entire concept basically started, how can we bring this learning outcomes to the students and how can we match these assessments? Because mm -hmm. students do tasks, they have mm -hmm. to do homework, mm -hmm. but now the homeworks kind of fit in the storyline. So yeah. they do things which we visualize mm -hmm. um, in in the cinematography or which is kind of uh, declared during when the avatars are talking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that, that means that these assess assessments are, are pretty much aligned automatically because mm -hmm. we have this, well, you can't change it anymore. Right. Um, they're aligned with these outcomes mm -hmm. and, and that's part of this assurance of learning. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and I guess that's that's where we started from. Right. And um, the important part for me is that it's a little bit arty. Mm -hmm. um, and I th because when we engage, when we engage mm -hmm. people, especially yeah. when we have to work with volunteers, right. then there has to be another aspect to it to, to engage mm -hmm. the community and, and participate in with right. this. So yeah. um, um, that's more or less where we came from and where we stand. Right. You, you, do you think that if there was a budget available, we would go into different heights? And if so, what to where? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so this, this is this is a pilot, of course. <laughs> yeah, I mean, course. We, we banked a lot on the goodwill of people. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's also because it was novel that mm -hmm. it's easier to get people engaged. Yeah. I mean, we did notice that like one of our actor actresses, uh, we asked her a couple of times. I mean, she was, you know, kind enough to do this yeah. um, for us. Sure. Of course, we you you cannot just um, keep on asking people to do this for free. Yeah, of course. Of course. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess for um, a, this is kind of like a production house. I mean, you need to have a budget for this. Also, yeah. we are now banking on the um, um, on the I ILH, ILH, I mean, you put quite some time in this. I mean, yeah, it was fine. because it's an, a new kind of idea, it probably mm -hmm. works fine with you, but mm -hmm. um, I don't know how this internally works within the university. Mm -hmm. So I'm, of course, happy with this card branch and I think it was really right. cool. Right. But when this gets formalized or when this is, uh, is more like a production house that's right. working for different courses, then I guess uh, there should be a budget attached to that. Sure, definitely.
agree. So, how do you think this will impact uh, the academic community? In uh, well, well, not in terms of students, but in terms of faculty. So when, okay. when other people see that, and uh, they do exactly what you do for a living. Yeah, ac academics are, are are an interesting breed. <laughs> <laughs> so um, indeed. So the, there's there's so many different types of teaching or methodologies, yeah, yeah. And, and some people want to stick to to one one particular yeah. model, and others have their own ideas. Right. Um, but I think I, I talked to some people, and um, actually one of the other award winners was um, was before he first was laughing. He's like, "Oh, you're gonna make some cartoons," <laughs> and then when we explained actually what the, how it how it was set up he thought well this is a really great idea we can use this also in our programs mm. so um i'm kind of banking or or hoping that some people um look at this template and say well you know when we're building a program we might as well put the storyline in it right. and then uh work with uh, us maybe um to see if we can contribute also yeah. on the uh, creative part or, right. or story writing no. So yeah, I understand. Well, Eilidge was always on board with this. Duncan was super happy to to support us, and he saw that uh, this could be an interesting, quirky thing. Um, and and so uh, from the beginning, uh, I mean, I was excited because I thought, well, there's a lot of space here to to improvise and and mm -hmm. to do something that hasn't been done at least here at, at the NU. And I think that the impact is going to be um, great in the long term. Not so much maybe in the short term, but maybe it will have some sort of ripple effect. And yeah, I hope so. I I I I, th I think it was a very genuine effort that we put into it. Yeah, we basically a lot of we barged in and <laughs> and we we made it. So what I appreciated was also that you said, okay, when when we're going to do this cinema, it has to be good. I don't want to be associated <laughs> with something that looks like just sloppily made because you know I have a career too, and I understand that. <laughs> and that was the same thing from my perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, we can, I think we kind of set the standard, and um, that's that's a good thing. Um, and I I think the the you know it's it's a project that's within a, within a pro program. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not something. It's not actually totally standalone. Right. Um, what I mean is not something that is distance learning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It could be made into distance learning as well. Sure. Um, but we have. I mean, we're here at NU, and in mm. principle, this is an in-person university, so it's sure. it's actually made for for that purpose. Mm -hmm. But it could be extended. I mean, if if NU ever thinks about making distance learning, that could be like a way mm. to to motivate uh, students as well. I mean, I I took some classes just to 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 see what people are doing with this mm -hmm. distance learning or remote learning. Yeah, and I mean, it's good, <laughs> but I. Th I think there there is a storyline lacking. It's a mm -hmm. little bit too. Um, it's it, it's it's more boring than I actually had expected. I mean, when right. you read their their storylines or mm -hmm. or what they're promising, and then when you actually take these classes, mm -hmm. it's. I mean, it could could be better. And I think we give a nice assist to you know to for other people who want to do these things to right. think about what is possible. Right. No, I agree. I mean, but. In terms of MOOCs, for example, you're suggesting something like that, or when you say distance learning. Oh, now you... you're testing my knowledge of innovative learning <laughs> <in> MOOCs. <laughs> no, I mean those online courses. No, are, sure, sure. Are yeah, I'm sure it's no. Yeah, no, I, I was, I was following through some different platforms. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I, I don't want to. I, I actually not an expert on this online platforms yeah. or, oh, or sure, comparing sure, sure. them. But uh, yeah, it's, that's I, what I'm just want to say is that it's possible to actually extend our mm -hmm. um, suggestions to, to mm -hmm. these platforms as well. Yeah, definitely. Well, um, in terms of media assets, just so I, I speak a little bit of my <laughs> yeah, sure. metier, my field of expertise, I did say that, yeah, I, if I were going to do something, it has to be done properly because um, I see a lot of content on the internet, you know, done by uh, very, very popular universities, universities that are highly ranked. And mm -hmm. sometimes um, the audio is not great or um, the picture is blurred or it's a low quality picture or just a green screen thing yeah. in the background and just a talking head saying some, you know, some stuff that is quite accurate, but there's no, no heart, no panache, no vibe. Um, there's nothing there that will keep young kids um, actually in tune with what's happening you know, what the facilitator is trying to convey, mm -hmm. right? And I remember that I, I told you as a joke uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago, mm -hmm. uh, the medium is the message, remember? And we were joking about that stuff. And it, the medium does tra change the message in some way, right? Depending on what medium uh, we are using to carry the, the, the message that we want right. to carry. So 
I thought, all right, let's try to make this as you know high quality as possible in terms of the resources that we have, the cinematic, and, and to also because I wanted you to be proud of uh, the materialization of your idea in in terms of, of of narrative and storytelling. You know what I mean? Okay. So so for me, it was really important to make this as as five minutes later as high quality as possible. You know, within the budget constraints, within the equipment constraints, and the personnel constraints. And we had a lot of constraints, but that's why. I I was very happy when you got the award because I thought, all right, um, in spite of the constraints, uh, putting heart uh, was rewarded with with something that you okay. know, potentially uh, will also impact other people in the community. I guess you know, like students, faculty, etc. Okay, all right. I'm rambling now and stuff. No, I'm, that's supposed, right. I'm supposed to interview you. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Um, uh, can we have a small break here? Yeah, sure. Okay, we go out for a commercial. After this, we come back. Boom. Stay tuned for more. Vinemont will be back. This is an automated message. Because of technical issues, our operators are not able to answer your call. Please leave a message after the beep. Beep! All right. Hey, welcome back. Um, I'm not Ricardo. This is Ricardo. I'm Tom. <laughs> We're just, I'm just going to ask some questions now. Uh, I had to write them down. I'm not really used to asking questions. Um, how was the experience? Hmm, the experience was great, actually. Um, it was really, really fun. Uh, it was innovative, and I learned a lot from you when it comes to uh, the pedagogy. Um, I know that you have a lot of experience from from other gigs, and uh, I thought that I could contribute more at first with the media side of things, mm -hmm. uh, but then. Also, because you open up space for me to be part of the, the the building process, I was really excited to also give my my two cents of what was my prior you know educational experiences as, as an instructor and also as a faculty member in other in other past lives. Yeah. So okay. uh, overall, it was exciting and, uh, and it was it was cool. And I'm looking forward to doing next uh, projects with you or or to gather new projects with you. All right, so ILH, uh, Innovative Learning Hub, mm -hmm. that's three words. Yeah. Um, if you would put three words on the project that we did, huh. what three words would you choose? Interesting. All right. Quirky. Can, huh? Okay, quirky. Can, can I start? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, thought, I thought I'll give you like 10 seconds. Oh, just 10 seconds like in, right. a, <laughs> okay, like in Jeopardy, okay. those, those competitions on TV. No, I think it was quirky. Um, I think it was immersive. And I think it was pedagogically sound. I know it's two words, but... Um, well, KIP. KIP. Or, <laughs> so we have Q-I-M-P. KIP. Yeah, KIP. Okay, cool. I, I think it was KIP. All right. Yeah, all right. Interesting. All right. Um, all right. So we did this... I think we jumped in. Mm -hmm. um, I, we did this very genuinely, yeah. very, very seriously. Right. Uh, we also had a lot of fun doing this, oh, which is important. Um, but if you, let's say, if you had a budget available for this, what mm -hmm. would you do differently? If we, or if we had actually, instead of just jumping in and doing step by step mm -hmm. and, and just filling things in as as a kind for a pilot. Mm -hmm. Um, if you could have prepared for it and there was a budget, what would you do differently? Right. So <clears throat> before we, we cut for break, I explained a little bit uh, my uh, my rationale for, you know, the high quality innovative media assets or uh, or other other related media assets that we had because it was not just video. Right. Um, but if there was a budget, I think we we could potentially uh, gamify this to uh, the extent where we would actually create a video game. Okay. I think it would be really cool to create uh, a proper video game, like a okay. role-playing game, okay. right? right. Um, where students are their own avatars mm -hmm. and you can actually interact with a, uh, a computer program, right? Where we have the Forge in the outer space, we have the dock showing up whenever it's necessary to conduct uh, business and we have the lawyer coming up. And so actually we have everything that is necessary and we kind of did a mock-up 
of of a video game since you gamified gamified your entire course right so i think that it would be really interesting if we could go one step further mm -hmm. and actually create a small video game that could then be put uh online and and you could actually use that as part of uh, the constructive alignment steps that we just or areas that we just uh, described previously actually you described previously in mm -hmm. the, the first part of this interview right i don't know if it makes sense yeah, yeah. so that's uh i think you're drawing an interesting path there mm -hmm. um and let me just tell you something about what the plans are for the future <laughs> actually all right um first hand well um we hadn't really thought totally about the the making a video game out of it. Mm -hmm. But the idea is that the contributions of these students um, are, they code, mm -hmm. they, they write some code and so mm -hmm. on, that over time we actually develop code so that they can do things in practice. Cool. So um, it's, it's, I think the video game is a, is, a, is a really great idea because there's a lot of entertainment in there. Yeah. But the idea is also that we, we take them actually to the industry Mm -hmm. um, and have them cooperate with the industry and, mm -hmm. the, and the industry cooperate with them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to create, for instance, a, um, a, a training trading room mm -hmm. where they can do these actual trades oh, cool. um, and then see how, how things work out. Right. So um, the common, I think uh, mm -hmm. thinking about the video game is, is great and mm -hmm. we should probably think about how we can go about with this and uh, yeah. then see how this fits in with the industry efforts as well. Yeah, definitely. I think it's important to bring industry into the classroom as well, because in the end, our students are going to be hired by that industry. And so they kind of set the, the standards for what we as, as facilitators should actually right. uh, give to them. Right. I, I guess. I don't know. You tell me. So uh, I think thanks. For, <laughs> you, don't wanna, uh, you don't want to continue for no, no. just cutting. <laughs> thanks. Thanks for for the ILH to uh, make this contribution. And because I'm asking the question, so I have a, I'm in charge oh. of the time. Here. Um, but, so I next whip. time, I next time, I, I hope we have, can have an interview with even more people. Yeah, definitely. And yeah. that that this project kind of takes off. Thank you very definitely. much, Ricardo, for this interview. Thank you very much, sir. It you was a pleasure. Switch seats again? No, no. Now you have to like just go there and, oh, right, and just right, finish right. it up. Well, how I guess. Do, I do that? I don't know. Just, just cover it up. Minutes.